Hello friends, today is Wednesday. It is October, I think, 7th today. I am very thirsty because I forgot to drink water while I was working out today. Oscar and Sadie want to go out onto the patio and eat leaves. So, I'm going to sit out here with you for a minute and talk to you. Just kind of catch up. Woo, it's bright. Maybe I'll sit in the other chair so I can see better. And so maybe you can see me. Awesome. That is a little better. Um, I have not been as consistent as I had promised myself I would be working out on the treadmill. The first three weeks, I consistently worked out four days a week. Uh, 30 to 40 minutes a day and on on those four days 30 to 40 minutes and last week I just had a mental shutdown it was it was a bad week I had very achy hips and did not feel like pushing through the wall and <laughs> the, the wall of resistance not wanting to do it I can usually say oh, I don't want to do it but I'm doing it anyway and last week I just I just couldn't make myself do it. I did work out twice last week. And this week began, ooh, it's so bright out here. This week began much the same way where I felt as though I just did not want to work out. So I had not planned on doing any working out at all. I intended to take the whole week off and just rest but lo and behold I was able to push through the wall and I have been working out so let's hope the rest of the week stays consistent I wanted to share with you that I did participate on um, Monday at, at a uh, online conference that was I guess they call it a webinar for the uh, MBCN network had posted on their website that there was going to be a webinar webinar where you could email in advance asking questions and um, have live conversation typing in questions while the conference was actually occurring and I took so many notes and I just wanted to briefly scan over with you I'm going to flip the camera so you have a different angle of me. I wanted to briefly discuss with you some of the things that were covered. Um, the topic began with the title being Living Beyond the Pink Colored Glasses, which I just loved that title because that's something I've been saying recently. We have, as a culture, covered ourselves in such a pink haze of awareness and motivation in watching people who are ill or people who know people who are ill with breast cancer participating in fun runs and and it's become quite a, a carnival atmosphere about the whole topic of breast cancer and as you know I take it a little bit more seriously than that because of the fact that I am living with a terminal illness I will die from um, metastatic breast cancer unless I get hit by a bus or die in a plane crash or something like that um, are you bringing leaves inside are you sneaking leaves in the house you are don't look so guilty is this your leave is this your leave yeah they're like Pringles she loves them so Sorry, I'm, I'm breathless. So I wanted to cover what, what they talked about. Um, one of the main points that I really found interesting that they discussed, however briefly, was that uh, breast cancer awareness talks about prevention and early detection. You can't prevent getting breast cancer if you happen to have the gene for breast cancer, then, dude, the cards are stacked against you. you you've got the gene. You most likely, 
probably will develop breast cancer if you test positive for the gene. Um, you may live your whole life and never develop any uh, breast cancer if you test positive, but the chances are pretty much higher if you do. However, you cannot prevent it. You can't prevent breast cancer. If you go in and you have a mammogram and they find a lump, you can prevent its spread by having a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, but you cannot prevent getting it. Until they come up with a vaccine or a cure, prevention is a myth. Um, there is only detection. Early detection is key. I've never heard anybody say, gee, I wish I'd have found my cancer later. No, you're never going to hear that. Early detection, early detection is what helps you to receive the treatments and the surgeries and the therapies that will help it to go away and hopefully never come back. Um, it's been widely reported that one in nine women develop breast cancer, and that is an inaccurate. I heard it on the news three times today. That is not true. It is one in eight. One in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. And of those one in eight who develop breast cancer, 30% of them will have it reoccur and either become stage four or metastatic. That's pretty high. That's almost half the population of women with breast cancer. So they, they kind of had a little thing where they talked about 10 things to help you get through the month of extreme pink. Um, and I'm just gonna read those 10 rules. Uh, one was don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. Um, there's nothing that we can do individually to prevent Marlboro from putting pink all over their package and turning their filter tips to cute little pink colors despite the fact that their product actually causes cancer. Kind of makes no sense that they would cover their product in pink for breast cancer awareness month. It's too small. I can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to ignore it and pass the information on to you. Uh, number two, they wrote, be fearless and speak. Speak now. So that's what I try to do with this blog. I let you know what's going on with me physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, how I am coping with surviving the diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer. I am speaking out. I am reaching out, which is step number three, to you, all of you women out there and some of you men who watch this blog, um, to let you know what is going on in the breast cancer community, what is going on with me. So I am, I am reaching out to you to share the information that I am gaining as I am going through this process. And I hope that in some way, shape, or form, it's beneficial to you. <clears throat> Number four sounds kind of cheesy. Laugh, but you have to. You have to laugh. Laughing has been scientifically proven to be healing. Laughter can really help you through a horrible time. You have to laugh at all of the silly, stupid things that happen when you are going through any kind of treatment, despite whether you are just being diagnosed with breast cancer and you know that you are going to reach a cancer-free state. Um, you're not terminal, I mean, and um, Regardless of where you are on the meter of, of cancer, whether you have breast cancer that is treatable, whether you have breast cancer that you are living with and it's not a good prognosis, there are so many silly, stupid things that happen. You, you just have to laugh. You, just, you have to. And it helps you to try to find the humor in some of the situations. Celebrate is number, oh wait, Number five is advocate, and that is to stand up for yourself. Um, research, research, research. Get all the information you can. Research. Talk to your doctors, and if they don't agree with what you are thinking should be your course of treatment, 
based on the information that they've provided and that you've learned, you have to advocate for yourself and say, I'm getting other opinions. Um, and advocate for others. If you see somebody that is not being treated well in the breast cancer community, stand up for them. Speak out for them. Advocate for them. Advocate for yourself and advocate for others. And then number six is celebrate. I try to, in my daily life, find little ways all the time to celebrate. We have a blue plate that says this is your day, celebrate. And for years we would use that plate on people's birthdays, on their anniversaries, and it became a forgotten tradition. It became something that, ah, oh, it's just another day and we forgot, but we have recently begun using that plate again. That is a way to celebrate. I try to get on the floor daily and throw toys back and forth to my dog. Um, I call my mom daily. Little, little ways to connect with other people and celebrate the life that you have. Things that make you happy. I buy flowers and put them in um, a beautiful vase that my daughter bought me. It's an owl. I like owls. I'm goofy that way. And seeing those flowers daily is just something that makes me happy. They're alive, they're colorful, they're beautiful. So do things for yourself and for others to celebrate your life. Um, remember, remember other people that you have known who have had any kind of cancer, especially breast cancer. Your grandma may have passed away from this. Your mother may have survived this or passed away from it. You know people, everybody knows somebody who has some kind of cancer and in this Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I encourage you to remember the people in your life who've touched your life or even if they are just an acquaintance who's like, you've got your little circle of friends and then your extended circle of friends and then people you know and people you know through people you know and they're like way out here on the edge of your circle try to remember them send a card pick up the phone that's way 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 better text if that's easier for you but remember remember yourself and remember others take responsibility for your life is number eight and that kind of goes hand in hand with advocating. You may not have made the same choices that I've made in my cancer treatment. You may have decided that you don't want any cancer treatment at all. That you just want to live treatment free and enjoy whatever life you have left. And that is, that is your life. That is your choice. And you need to take responsibility for that. Do not, do not put other people down for the choices that they have made with their life. Take responsibility for your own. Appreciate. Appreciate the little moments. Every single day ties in again with celebrating, but appreciating is a much more simple thing. I will be watching a television show with my family and we will all break out in hilarious laughter. And in those moments, I actually say in my head to God, thank you for this moment. And I appreciate it so much. I even appreciate my dogs barking because that's the only way they can communicate. And finally, number 10 was hope. There is always hope. There is no such thing as hopelessness. Every single day has an opportunity for hope to come into your life. So I hope for you that you have a hopeful day. 30% uh, of women treated with early cancer detection will later in life, 10 to 15 years after their original diagnosis, be diagnosed with either stage 4 or having metastasized to other part of their bodies, stage four metastatic breast cancer. Um, and as I've covered in previous videos, and I'll reiterate again, there is not just one kind of cancer. There is triple negative. 
there is estrogen receptor positive, there is um, inflammatory breast cancer, there are many types of breast cancer. There's many types and stages and symptoms as there are women. We are all different and unique and our bodies are going to react differently. So, Oscar says hi. Um, please, in this month of pink, think about what you are doing before you purchase a product just simply because it's swathed in baby pink. Uh, early on in this video, I mentioned that Marlboro has a campaign where their packaging is now pink and they've changed the filter color to pink. That is a cancer causing product. Think about what you are purchasing. If you are buying ant poison and it is bathed in pink for cancer awareness, is a dangerous chemical and the purchase of that just buying it because it's in a pink package important to you. Think about what you are buying. Fine, buy the pink blender, but find out if the pink blender actually gives any of the money that is raised from the sale of that product to any specific charities or causes or research organizations. Hang on, let me go bring them in so that they stop talking. Hey guys, come on. Come on. Sorry about that. So yes, Think Before You Pink was one of the main things that kind of got covered. Um, also, just for a moment want to cover the fact that a lot of people who do have <laughs> breast cancer, no, stop it. A lot of people who do have breast cancer just don't get it when they're like, oh, you have metastatic breast cancer. You are gonna beat this. You're gonna be a survivor. You're gonna get through this. Well, yes, I am gonna get through this. I'm gonna get through this by dying. But while I'm getting to the point of dying, I am going to live a great life, as great as I possibly can. People just don't get that metastatic means dying, terminal, terminal, terminal. Support groups were covered in this uh, webinar and they are a really great resource. However, as I can speak from my personal experience and as was noted by several people who had written in and a, a woman who spoke at the uh, webinar, oftentimes you will go to a support group environment and when they find out that you have metastatic or end of life breast cancer, they're very undiplomatic about letting you know <laughs> that perhaps your, your diagnosis will bring the rest of the group down because they're hoping to have surgery and chemo and then be declared disease free and then get to their five year mark and feel like they've reached the cure, which as we now know is not true because 10 to 15 years later, they can find out they have what I have. Um, it's this whole pink thing of October is like that commercial. Do you remember the commercial where people are walking down the street and they see a piece of trash and it's right next to the trash can and they all stop and have this conversation about how they can't believe that somebody threw that trash there right next to the trash can. How could they do that? It's just sitting there. Well, while you're having this bitch fest about the trash being on the ground and nobody doing anything about it, somebody walks by, picks up the trash and throws it away. And in that commercial, all the people were like, why didn't I think of that? 
pink is a great, great thing to bring awareness, but awareness has been reached. Oscar Bolas, come here. Come here. Awareness has been reached. Now we need to change our awareness to knowledge and take that knowledge and put it into action. The action that I am choosing is what little I can do for my little corner of the world is reach out to you all, reaching out through the internet, through my videos, through my blogs, through emails, talking to people as I meet them and letting them know now that we know what cancer is and how to prevent it with early diagnosis, let's move forward and work on forcing research companies to spend that money not on publicity but on research and treatments are great they're keeping me alive I'm really grateful for them but let's work beyond treating cancer standing around the trash can talking about the trash that's sitting on the ground and pick the damn trash up and dispose of it let's find a cure Let's put our money, not behind products, but behind research. Really, how many pink things do you need in your home? Thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate your viewership. And any comments or questions that you have, feel free to put them in the comments below. I always really, really appreciate those thumbs up. So please, thumbs up this video. And if you happen to swing by Leslie's Cancer Confessions, follow and subscribe. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Bye, friends.